This video will show you how to replace the starter motor and ignition coil in your Champion Inverter. Before beginning, fully drain the fuel tank by loosening the fuel drain screw at the bottom of the carburetor and capture the fuel into an appropriate container. Then tighten the fuel drain screw. Make sure the engine switch and fuel valve are in the off positions. Then remove the rear panel and disconnect the spark plug cap. Step 1. Remove the two screws to remove the battery housing on the side of the unit. Then use a Phillips head to remove the black battery lead, followed by the red battery lead, and fully remove the battery from its housing. Step 2. On that same side panel, remove the two upper screws with a Phillips head, and remove the two lower bolts with a 10mm socket. Then remove the three screws from the top handle with a Phillips head to remove the side panel, and remove the carbon canister. Then remove the rest of the top handle. Step 3. Use a Phillips head to remove the three screws on the opposite handle, and use a flathead to carefully pry apart and remove the handle. Remove the fuel cap and use a Phillips head to detach the chain, and then replace the screw inside the cap so you don't lose it. Remove the four bolts holding on the top panel using a 10mm socket, and fully remove the top panel. Step 4. Use a pair of pliers to loosen and remove the fuel vent line from the fuel tank. Then replace the fuel cap and use a 7mm socket to remove the four bolts holding on the fuel tank. Lift up the fuel tank and locate the fuel line near the panel. And use a pair of pliers to loosen the clip and carefully remove the fuel line. Then fully remove the fuel tank. Step 5. Remove the two bolts on the handle frame bracket with a 10mm socket. Then remove the two side panel Phillips screws and lower bolts with a 10mm socket to remove the remaining side panel. Remove the four black handle bolts, two on each side, using a 10mm socket, and fully remove the handle. Step 6. Locate the control unit support bolt and remove it with a 7mm socket. Then carefully disconnect all of the wire connectors from the control unit. This will allow you to remove the control unit and set it aside. Remove the two lower bolts on the control unit bracket using a 7mm socket, and then remove the four bolts holding on the control unit housing, two on each side, with a 10mm socket. Then disconnect the two wire connectors from the rectifier and remove the control unit bracket. Step 7. Remove the hose from the air filter and set the carbon canister aside. Then remove the two lower bolts on the rear panel with a 10mm socket and fully remove the rear panel. Step 8. Disconnect the green, yellow, and blue choke cable connectors and remote wire connector and remove the fuel line with a pair of pliers. Then use a small Phillips head to remove the two screws holding on the recoil handle plate and feed the recoil handle through the hole on the front panel. Then remove the two lower bolts with a 10mm socket and let the front panel fall forward to access the wiring. Step 9. Snip the cable ties and remove any wire casing to access all wires. Disconnect all wire connectors from behind the panel and disconnect the color matched wires connected to the engine. Then use a 10mm socket to remove the battery lead from the starter relay, and use a 10mm socket to remove the bolt holding on the starter relay. Cut the zip tie and disconnect the ignition coil wire connector, and set aside the front panel. Step 10. Remove the breather tube, and open up the air filter box to remove the filter. Then locate the two nuts inside and remove them with a 10mm socket. Remove all gaskets, the filter housing, and slide the carburetor fully off the studs. Step 11. Use a 12mm socket to remove the four engine bolts, two on each side of the engine, and then lift the engine off the base. Use a 10mm socket to remove the four bolts holding on the fan cover, and remove the fan cover. To replace the ignition coil, remove the two ignition coil bolts using a 10mm socket, then remove the ignition coil. Set the new ignition coil in place and finger tighten the bolts, then rotate the flywheel, cut a business card in half, and place it in between the ignition coil and the flywheel magnet to create the accurate gap size. Then fully tighten the bolts and remove the business card. Make sure the flywheel can spin freely, and set the ignition coil wires in their appropriate places. Step 12. Remove the two starter motor bolts using a 10mm socket and remove the starter motor. You can then pull back the boot and fully disconnect the starter relay with a 10mm socket. Step 13. Take your new starter motor and attach it back to the starter relay's negative terminal. And then place the starter motor directly through the slot on the engine and replace the two bolts and tighten securely. Now follow these steps to reassemble the unit. 
Replace the fan cover and secure it in place with the four bolts, and make sure to replace the ground wire. Place the engine back on the base and align the engine holds with the studs. Then secure the engine in place with the four 12mm nuts. Replace the carburetor, gasket, and air filter housing, and secure with the gasket and two 10mm nuts. Then replace the air filter and the air filter cover, and reinsert the breather tube. Replace the control unit bracket and tighten the two side bolts. Set the rear panel in place, tighten the two lower bolts, and secure the rear panel to the control unit bracket with the two bolts. Get the front panel and reconnect all cables and color matched wire connectors. Reconnect the ground wire, charger ground, and black positive battery wire to the starter relay and attach to the engine with a 10mm bolt. Then reconnect the white panel power wire and red negative battery wire to the starter relay. Feed all cables back in place, reconnect the ignition cable, reconnect the color matched choke cable connectors and the remote wire connector, and lift the front panel into place. Secure the front panel by tightening the two lower bolts and tightening the two bolts connecting the control unit bracket. Then secure the ignition cable to the engine with a zip tie. Pull the recoil handle back through the panel and secure it in place with the two Phillips screws. Replace the fuel line, connect the wire connectors to the rectifier, slide the control unit back into the bracket and reconnect all wire connectors. Then replace the lower support bolt. Replace the back handle and secure to the frame with the four black bolts, two on top and two on the side. Reconnect the fuel line from the fuel tank using a pair of pliers. Set the fuel tank in place and tighten the four fuel tank bolts. Replace the fuel vent line and replace the top panel and secure with the four bolts. Reconnect the fuel cap chain and tighten the fuel cap. Feed the hose from the carbon canister back through the frame and insert it into the air filter housing and then replace the carbon canister and put the side panel back in place. Secure the side panel with the two Phillips screws and the two lower bolts. Then replace the top handle and tighten the three Phillips screws. Replace the exhaust side panel and tighten the two Phillips screws and two lower bolts. Tighten the two inner bolts on the side handle and then replace the remainder of the handle and tighten the three Phillips screws. Replace the battery and secure the red battery lead followed by the black battery lead and replace and secure the battery cover. Lastly, replace the spark plug cap and replace the rear panel. Always follow the safety guidelines in your operator's manual, and for more help guides, visit the Champion Help Center at help.championpowerequipment.com.